What's up, everybody? Pastor Matt here. Thanks for checking into the YouTube channel. We're going back to Bible reviews today. Yes, I'm trying to pull away from them, but I keep getting lured back in by amazing Bibles. Today, I want to talk about one of the all-time greatest Bibles. In fact, um, quick short story here. Back when I started reviewing Bibles, however many years ago it was, uh, probably one of the first Bibles I ever reviewed was an ESV study Bible. It was this one right here, um, which is bound by R.L. Allen out of the UK. This is the personal size ESV study Bible. And in my written review back when I was writing reviews, used to have a blog. I don't even have it anymore. I made a claim that it was the greatest um, Bible ever put together in the history of the world. <laughs> and honestly, I haven't changed my mind all too terribly much from that because the ESV study Bible is truly one of the greatest compendiums of biblical study in one cover that you can possibly have. And I, I don't mean to overstate the case, but it has been so for a number of years now that the ESV Study Bible truly is the best one-volume resource of any other book or Bible in the world. Now, some of you, perhaps the ESV isn't your favorite Bible translation. For me, the ESV is my, my favorite Bible translation. I find it to be one of the best ever done. Um, as somebody who reads the Greek daily in the mornings for breakfast, I can tell you that the ESV is an amazing translation. We're not going to talk about translation though as much here. I've done other videos on that, um, so you can disagree with me on translation if you like, but it would be hard to dispute that there's any other study Bible that's ever been put together that has the same amount of content from the most reputable scholars as the ESV study Bible does, and uh, I happen to have a few of them, uh, and I've had a few of them over the years, this one right here is not the one we're going to review. This is my main one. This is the one we do our family devotions from. Uh, and I did have this one rebound by Leonard's uh, books and uh, rebinding a number of years ago now. I love this one. This is my one of my all-time favorite Bibles. Uh, but the one we're going to be actually looking at today for this review is uh, not so much a new edition of the ESV Study Bible as, as though uh, a new cover placed on the ESV Study Bible. So this right here is the one we're going to look at. It's a marvelous uh, edition, a new printing of it. This one is the Cowhide Deep Brown. We're going to take a little bit of a look at the outside of this Bible, but um, mostly what I want to do is introduce new readers to what the ESV Study Bible offers in terms of an entire library of biblical content for you under one roof, so to speak. Now, the first thing you're going to notice here um, as we get into looking at this Bible is that I mean, this is a this is a large book. This is a very large book. Um, sometimes I lift kettlebells in the morning. Uh, sometimes I just lift my ESV study Bible. It's huge. When I travel, I have to put a U-Haul in the back of my minivan uh, just to keep my minivan uh, from riding on two wheels. Um, if I get on the airplane, I've got to pay extra cargo for this thing. Um, this thing is heavy. It's a very big book. This is not necessarily the book that you would take with you to church, although I've done that too. I don't even have a problem with that. Um, I see a lot of people that bring ESV study Bibles to our congregation here. And by the way, I should mention, if you're new to this channel, my name is Pastor Matthew Everhart. I'm the Senior Pastor of Gospel Fellowship, PCA. We're a Reformed church just north of Pittsburgh. If you're looking for a church like that, you found one, come visit us, Gospel Fellowship, PCA. Try to mention that in everything I do. Now, there's a ton of other good study Bibles out there on the market. The Reformation Study Bible, edited by the late Dr. R.C. Sproul, is another incredible Bible. And as much as I love Ligonier, I love R.C. Sproul, uh, I do believe that the ESV Study Bible is still better yet in some senses than the Reformation Study Bible. They both have an incredible uh, cast of um, scholars who put it together. So, so this one right here that we're looking at, this is the Cowhide Deep Brown. It is a, um, um, a beautiful leather I don't want to talk too much about just the leather. I want to get into the contents, but you can see here we have an amazing grain on this. We have perimeter stitching going around the edges. Uh, it's all beautiful. This is an edge lined cover, so this is not a paste down. Now, that's one difference between uh, this and the old one I had rebound by Leonard's um, is that the original one and the true tone covers were paste down, which I always thought was a little bit strange because of how sturdy the Bible is. Yes, it's made like a tank, but normally you want an edge-lined Bible if you have something that's really big and girthy like this. So you can see here that the inner 
leather wraps over and holds on to that text block like a clamp so you're not going to have any separation issues normally your fault line right here is where a bible tears away from its cover right along here um, and one of the things you'll notice here is that the leather is basically the same on the outside as it is the inside if I have a look at the one that they sent me for review, and thank you, Crossway, for uh, sending me these review Bibles. My relationship with Crossway, um, I, they don't pay me at all. I'm not an advertiser for them, but they do send me Bibles to review, and I give them my honest, um, my honest report. The only difference between the inner cover and, uh, and, the, and the liner, or the outer cover and the liner, I would say, is that the outer seems to be a little bit glossier. But other than that, it's the same brown cowhide. Um, and you can see here that um, we've got nice done corners here. This is, a, this is a well done book. But let's move from the outside to the inside and talk about why the ESV Study Bible is, in my view, still has been and probably will be the greatest library of content that you can put under one cover. You really can do much more other than the book would just get too big. But if you look at the, uh, the contributors here, that's where the ESV Study Bible really shines. Now, um, we Presbyterians, we tend to be uh, perhaps overrepresented <laughs> in our academic acumen. Most Presbyterian pastors who are ordained have to at least have a master's degree. Uh, some of us go on to get a doctoral degree as well. And so, so as, a, as, a, as a minister, I have a, a great familiarity with a lot of these scholars that are listed here as the contributors. In fact, some of them I've studied under directly during my own education. And so if you are uh, one who is, reads a lot of books, is into scholarship, you're going to know a lot of these names, a ton of these names. If not, just maybe skip over this portion of the review. But I wanted to mention several of these people that are, I mean, these guys are huge in their fields. Uh, Lane Dennis is the main uh, executive editor of the ESV Study Bible. Wayne Grudem is one of the contributing editors here. The theological editor is J.I. Packer. I mean, you can't get much of a bigger name than J.I. Packer. You also have Thomas Schreiner here, as well as Justin Taylor. I will hurry up. I'm not going to mention every single name here, but there's just so many um, contributors. And basically what the ESV um, study Bible did is it's, um, well, let's see, there's another, another slide I wanted to show you here. Where is that? Basically what they did as far as the contributors is they found the best scholar of every single book of the Bible. So it kind of works like this. If you're a biblical scholar, you can't be the master of every book. You, you can't possibly know as much about Genesis as you do Ecclesiastes, as you do John, as you do Revelation or First Thessalonians. It's, it's just impossible to, to master every book. So what the ESV study Bible did is they literally went out and they got the best guy in the field for every single one of the books of the Bible. So you've got like Mark Futado right here, who is one of my professors at RTS Orlando. You've got David Baker down here, who's another one of my professors at Ashland Theological Seminary. He's like the best guy on Zephaniah. Uh, Futado is one of the best on Jonah. You've got Ortland. You've got uh, Ian Duguid down here. You've got Grudem. You've got Schreiner. You've got Kostenberger. You've got Vern Poitras. You've got Dan Doriani. Leland Riken, and you have all sorts of other articles that are contributed by men like John Piper, David Paulinson, Kent Hughes, Daniel Wallace, John Currid, Peter J. Williams over there in the UK, David Allen Black, Gentry, Rhodes, Ware, Robert Lethem. Um, the, the name list just goes on and on and on. I thought John Frame was in here. I don't see his name off the cuff, um, but yeah, so the ESV Study Bible is, is just fantastic, not only for its contributors, but the content therein. And so throughout this entire Study Bible, you're going to have all kinds of charts and materials. It seems like every other page has some sort of a technical chart for you that's going to help you to understand the historical context of the books of the Bible. Not only that, but major sections are also preceded by um, in a section introduction, for instance, here we have the introduction to the Pentateuch. So before we get into the first five books of the Bible, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy, you have a section introduction to that kind of genre, uh, that kind of literary material. You'll find the same thing for the Gospels and for the epistles and for the prophetic books and things like this. Um, of course, like many other Bibles, it has a presentation page, nice and clean. And I always tend to look at this page right here. This is interesting because this is going to let you know where the Bible is printed, in this case in China. And if you've ever wondered what these numbers are down here on the bottom, 
this is your clue about when this particular Bible that's in your hand was printed. So in this case, um, this is the brand new one. It was printed in the year 2021. That's what this number means here on the right. And this number down here, the 16, indicates it's the 16th printing of this particular book. So that's pretty impressive to go through 16 printings. If I look at the old one that I had, um, that was rebound by Leonard's that I showed you earlier. This that one was in 2010, and it was the sixth printing of the ESV Study Bible. So they continue to make thousands and thousands and thousands of ESV Study Bibles. So you probably may even have one, or somebody that you know certainly has one of these. Let's continue to look through the content here. Here's um, on this page, page six, we have a. Uh, kind of like a table of contents for all of the articles and resources. And as you can see, there are dozens and dozens of articles and resources on practically every single topic, both biblical and theological. We've already looked at some of the contributors. When you look to any one particular book of the Bible, for instance, right here in the Psalms, you're going to notice that the introduction to said book is several pages long. Again, the best out of any study Bible I've ever seen. Um, not only is it going to give you some historical background about that book, it's going to tell you about its genre of literature. Let me just open one up real quick right here, if you'll be patient with me. I've got Genesis open here. I'm looking at the Psalms on my screen, but you've got a section that says author, title, and dates. You've got its place in the Pentateuch, the arrangement of the book. You have main themes, key themes, which are usually theological, a history of salvation summary, uh, Genesis and history, Genesis and science, Reading Genesis in the first century, uh, literary features, and then a major outline of the book that helps you to, uh, to frame up the whole book at a glance. All right, so that's a ton of material to have for the introduction of any one book. Again, it's probably the best I've seen. Now, if we look at any one sample page here of the ESV Study Bible, let's go ahead and make a few observations. First of all, we're going to notice that the ESV study Bible is presented in one column. So unlike other Bibles, which are presented in two columns, we have a single column here. We have large chapter numbers. We have fairly large and, and quite bold verse numbers, to be honest. And that's one thing that I really, really love. I have preached from the ESV study Bible a number of times. In fact, that used to be my main preaching Bible, believe it or not. So there's no problem seeing the verse numbers. The font size listed on the back is uh, not present. <laughs> I don't see the font size. I think it's like a nine or something like that, nine and a half. It's a, it's a pretty large font. It's amazing how they get all of this into one cover. Looking then at uh, the rest of the page, you see that you have your reference suite right here in the center columns or the center margins. And that's nice because that means that your text isn't going to spill into the crevasse and get lost into the uh, the mystery places of, of the Bible here. Um, and then your notes are going to take place in two columns down here, of course, corresponding to the verse. So you key the verse down to the note. And you can see here that the ESV study Bible uses kind of a lot of color throughout the notes. Each color block right here kind of indicates the, the introduction of a new section or a new theme within the notes themselves. I think the notes are some of the best. Um, it's very similar to reading a, a, a good to moderately in-depth commentary. And uh, the ESV Study Bible features just a ton of beautiful in-color artwork, which sets it apart from some of the other study Bibles out there. I mentioned the Reformation Study Bible done by R.C. Sproul a couple minutes ago. That's a great study Bible too, but I'll tell you two things that I've noticed. First, the ESV Study Bible has more notes, okay, so just in terms of pure bulk of content, the ESV has more on any given chapter and any given verse, Although, actually, some of the contributors are the same. If you line up all the contributors between the two, you're going to notice uh, some sharing of, uh, of talent there in between those two Bibles. But one thing that the Reformation Study Bible does not do very well, and the ESV Study Bible does excellently, is full-color illustrations. You see here the high priestly garments in this particular illustration. Very, very helpful stuff. Because as you're reading the description of, for instance, this priest's ephod, in the Bible, you, you get a visual with the color that's described in the Bible itself. So that's pretty cool. Uh, the maps are also in full color. Again, that's a difference 
at least in the older versions of the Reformation Study Bible. Um, I have an old one and a, a new one here, but it's not within reach at the moment. I don't believe the maps are in color. And if they are, they're not as vivid as they are in the ESV Study Bible. So you've got maps within maps and color within color here. It's just an incredible resource. Again, here's another example of the tabernacle tent in full color with lots of, uh, lots of comments and um, markers there to help you understand what's being described. And again, you just have so many sections that uh, you ha practically have a Bible dictionary in your hand as well. So not only is it a, a Bible, you have the full text of the Bible, obviously, and not only is it a, a good to moderate commentary on the Bible, but you essentially have what amounts to a Bible dictionary. Now, um, I have a pretty good Bible dictionary over here. The Holman Bible Dictionary is one that I've recommended before on this channel. It's a great resource, uh, also has a ton of color images, photographs, and, uh, you know, pictures, illustrations. So it's nice to have that. But the ESV Study Bible kind of combines the best of a Bible dictionary with uh, the best features of a, of a commentary in itself. So again, there's just charts practically on every other page. One of the things that I really like, and let me just highlight one of the feature items within the ESV study Bible are these timelines that they give you here. And I like the way they do this. Um, they do this for a lot of the books of the Bible, but for instance, this one, I believe is from Galatians maybe. Yeah. Yeah. This is from the, the, the section on Galatians. Notice the way they do this. They've got like an event, the death and resurrection of Christ, Paul's conversion, Paul's visit to Jerusalem, Paul writes the letter to the Galatians, Paul's missionary journeys, and they kind of have this plotted out on a really easy to see timeline. And I just find that to be really a great way to do timelines. It's kind of different from your linear line with a bunch of different items on that one line. This puts it in a visual chart. And um, that's so throughout the books, uh, such as Acts, where you have a lot of chronology uh, tying together with the various letters in Paul's epistles. So that's very, very helpful stuff as a preacher. Man, it's just at a glance information. I love that. Um, again, book introductions have nice, helpful outlines. Um, when I was preparing for my uh, ordination exams for the presbytery, you have to have command of every book of the Bible, be able to outline them on the spot. They might even ask you to outline a book of the Bible when you're being ordained by the presbytery. And so these outlines were very, very helpful to me. So I could just look at a book like this is Ephesians right here. And it's like, okay, yeah, that's right. That's right. He talks about this and then this and then the armor of God at the end. And you can just see how the book unfolds. So those outlines are really well done. Again, if we look at the comments here, we're going to notice that the comments are uh, very, very in-depth. You're going to get some commentary on the original languages. You're going to get some commentary on the background. You're going to get commentary on theological themes. Of course, as a Presbyterian, I would do this to you. I'd pull up the commentary on the word predestined in verse 5 of chapter 1 of Ephesians, right? Just throwing that out there. Some people have even said that the ESV study Bible is a distinctively Calvinistic or Reformed study Bible. Now, um, I would say to some extent that is a largely true generalization, but certainly not every contributor is a Presbyterian. There are a lot of Reformed, uh, uh, reformed commentators and a lot of uh, Presbyterian commentators, but not all. There's commentators from all kinds of different backgrounds here in the ESV study Bible. There's Anglicans and there's Independents and there's Baptists and there's others as well. So it's not just a Reformed Presbyterian study Bible, but I, but I would say, I would acknowledge that the majority of the people who contributed to this volume come from places like RTS or Westminster Theological Seminary or Gordon Conwell or, or others. Um, there are some from places like Fuller and whatnot, but um, the majority, even a, even a Dallas Theological Seminary guy or two in there, um, but you're going to see guys from all over the place. You're going to see guys from um, from the UK. Even uh, some of the I see a I see a Harvard in there. Not that there's anything liberal in this particular volume, uh, but yeah, it does lean a little bit reform. Now, is it overtly Calvinistic? Uh, not necessarily. In fact, let me give you a good example of what I think is. Um, a, a good theological spread. 
In the commentary on the book of Revelation, um, it does a very good job of setting out for you the major views and allowing the reader to decide. And in fact, some of the comments will even give you a diversity of theological views within the comments themselves. So it does that, for instance, in some of the difficult passages in the book of Daniel, same thing in the book of, uh, of Revelation. It gives you the various views, whether you're post-mill, a-mill, uh, pre-mill, pre-trib. It does set that all out for you in fairness and allow the reader to decide. But by and large, yeah, most of the commentators here in this volume are or lean reformed. Okay, great set of, uh, of references here. Full usability there in terms of this. Again, tons of charts and call outs. Now, one of the other things that I want to mention about the ESV Study Bible that makes it such a rich resource is in the back of the book, you get to the back matter. A lot of Bibles just have a concordance, right? Well, of course, it has that too. But you have a mini systematic theology in the back of the book. Now, one qualifier here is that if you get the personal size, um, the, this is the Allen one, but uh, Crossway sells a personal size edition, which is smaller, then this content is not printed in the smaller edition to make it easier to hold. Just to show you a visual size comparison here, hopefully uh, that gives you a little bit of an indicator that this is a much smaller book. So they left out some of the back matter in the personal size edition. But if you get the full size edition, if you get this one right here that I'm reviewing, and I'm obviously going to link in the description of this video, then you are going to get all this content. And so you get a biblical overview, a biblical doctrinal over, overview, which is essentially a tiny systematic theology. Of course, it's not going to be as big as like a, a Burkhoff. There's no way you'd get that in one cover. But you get a very agile, very usable, small systematic theology. I've consulted it several times. You get a overview of biblical ethics. You get a section on interpreting the Bible. You get a section on reading the Bible devotionally and otherwise. You get a, a history of salvation in the Old Testament as it prepares for Christ. And then, of course, you do get, um, look at all these maps. My goodness, there's a ton of maps in this book. And then you get um, what you would think of as a standard concordance throughout. The maps in the book and the back of the book are full color and on glossy thick paper, which I think is uh, best practices. It's the best case scenario. You like those maps to be nice and, and tough because that's going to actually help hold the Bible together because usually the last few pages are the ones that fall out. But if the maps are made of a good solid cardboard, and in this case, a nice glossy material too, all the better for the durability as well as the visibility of the maps themselves. Okay, final thing I think I'm going to mention here before just showing you a panoply of pictures is this colophon. Now, I think this is awesome. I wish all Bibles had a colophon in the back. So Crossway, if you're listening, do this more often. Uh, you too, Thomas Nelson. You too, Zondervan. You too, Cambridge. Do a colophon. This is cool. This lets you know who the editorial team is, who the design team is, what the typesetting is, um, the management's. It even tells you at the bottom, and for us Bible nerds, we like this stuff, what typefaces are used, in this case, Lexicon, Frutiger, and Helvetica. And it tells you what paper is used. This is awesome, thin, opaque, 30 GSM. And the binding type, Smithsone, obviously, couldn't, be, couldn't possibly be glued in a book this big. And then it tells you the printing and the binding was done by R.R. Donnelly and Sons. Now, I was just curious because this is the new one that I've got for review. If the paper was the same as my previous ESV study Bible done so many years ago, and I will tell you that it is not the same paper. This one, the 10 years ago one, maybe some of you have this one, was called Prima Lux 30 GSM paper out of France. And then it gives a few more details there. This is the thin opaque 30 GSM. So the 30 uh, GSM is the same thickness of the paper. The, op the opacity should be about the same. I actually thought when I saw this new one here, this new deep cowhide brown one that Crossway sent me to review, I thought that the paper actually had more show through and ghosting. And I was going to complain about that in this review. And uh, then I went to take some pictures of side by side in the same text. And um, I realized, no, it's really about the same. It's, re it's really quite consistent. I couldn't get any photograph to indicate any difference in the uh, show through and the ghosting. I thought that might be the case, but when I held them up side by side in the same light, uh, looked 
at the same with the same camera and with my own naked eyes in the same room, it's a, it's really about the same. Maybe I feel to my fingertips a little bit more of like a sheen or a gloss on the old French paper than the new thin opaque, but I couldn't really tell much of a difference at all when I actually had them side by side. So part of it just might have to do with I've been using the one for 10 years and maybe it absorbs a little moisture out of the air. Maybe it's get a little bit more oil from my fingertips. I don't know what the difference is, but maybe it's even the way the new pages kind of stick together with the, the gilding on the side that made it feel different to me. But although the paper is technically different, um, there, there was not anything that I could illustrate to you in this kind of a review that there was a difference, right? Back of the box tells you that there's 2 million words, 20,000 notes. Uh, 40 illustrations, 200 color maps, 80,000 cross-references, 200 plus charts, 50 articles on topics of theology, ethic, ethics, and biblical teaching. So you have all of that. And let's go ahead and just look at a couple of pictures here. Now we're just basically window gazing. Really, the review is pretty much over. Here's the box you're going to get. Here's some fairly obvious product placements on my part. A cheap promotion of my own book, which just came out, Holy Living, Jonathan Edwards, 70 Resolutions for Living the Christian Life. I mean, you got to do that, right? A little selfish uh, self-promotion there in the background. Um, here's the book in the grip of the hand. I thought you might like to see an image of just how big this book is. Having these smaller books down on my desk for perspective, I'm not sure if that helps or hurts <laughs> your view of how large this book is. Um, here it is spread and held over my desk. Um, these pages are kind of sticking together here because the book is brand new. But it, it is holdable. If you're worried that you can't hold this thing up, I am kind of overdoing how big this book is. It is large. It's not impossible. Again, I have preached from this Bible many, many times in the past. I used to preach from it exclusively for a while. Um, here's just a sample of the, the text, how nice and readable it is. You can see those big, bold verse numbers right here, very eminent to the eye if you are using this to preach or to teach. Um, more product placement, of course. Here it is in comparison with a paperback book. I think my book is 150 pages, so if that helps you just to kind of guesstimate how, how large the book is. There it is compared in size, and uh, that is pretty much the end of this review video. Well, I hope you stuck with me all the way to the end. Of course, I will place a link to this exact ESV study Bible in the description of this video. So if you're watching on YouTube, just go ahead and toggle down in the description, hop over to Amazon and you can grab one for yourself. Again, thanks to Crossway for sending these Bibles to me for review for free. They cost me nothing. All I have to do is say what, my, what I honestly think about them. Uh, in Crossway's case, of course, I love practically everything they do, and that's uh, that's an honest truth. All right. Well, thank you so much for uh, for checking into this YouTube video. It was nice hanging out with you today. Uh, be sure to check out all the other content that I do. I'm trying to come up with a cool name for my new newsletter. So if you have an idea for me, be sure to send it to me. Other than that, that's about it. I do love you lots, and we will talk to you later.